Bob Mennery. Hi, Eric. You, <laughs> we were just doing a mic check, and I got jealous of your voice. Do it again. Do your mic check again. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Tw- I won't stop. That's... Do you think in this voice? No. I just. You have a different voice to think in. Yeah. yeah. What does that voice sound like? It's just this. Just chilling. <laughs> I just chill. Um, I think we need to start at the beginning. Okay. When did we first first meet? Do you remember this? Uh, yeah. I carried your golf bag. No. What? It was before that. Oh, really? Well, maybe because uh, wh- who, who did you live with? That guy? Um, John Downs. John Downs. And you were pitching the project, the blue balls. Yeah. Not blue balls. Be wrong, the ball. Wrong project. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, be the ball. Yeah. And I think uh, you and John were talking about that, and I walked in. It was at your house. It was at the house that I was just renting, a, like the crack shed in the back from John. In Los Angeles. And you were a caddy at the time at Wilshire, and I wasn't a member. You were this not was, a member. This was five, six, seven years ago. That was the first time by the pool table. I remember you guys were sitting right here at the table, and the pool table was right there. Yeah. So in a sense, like, I mean, you know, I have this whole idea about, like, you know, random, like, interaction. And when you meet people, and it's very strange, it's like, it's interesting that that happened. Because I even met John. After playing at Wilshire, and he was just sitting there playing dice, and he just looks at me and he goes, do you want to play dice? And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. Of course he did. <laughs> We've had several dice games in the house, yep. So, but I think for the people that don't know who you are, like my parents, mm-hmm. explain who what it, who is Bob Mennery. I have who? no fucking idea. Uh, <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, I'm a guy who does comedic uh, sports videos that basically I pretend I'm a sports announcer, and I say what sports announcers want to say, but can't. So basically, like, if you're a sports announcer, like, Jim Nance can't be like, yeah, ball to 30, knocks his dick off, you know, and <laughs> can't say that, but I can. So I created that thing on Instagram, and it kind of just took fire really quickly somehow. I don't know why, but. I remember uh, around any large sporting event, yeah. like, I think it was the day before the Super Bowl, you texted videos to me, and you're like, I remember, it. even back then, I remember it, you were like, the game starts tomorrow, but the pregame right. starts now. I would send you personal. I used to do it to everybody. Well, my shtick was always this. Like, it started, I've always done this shtick because I had, like, a cool little voice, like, you know, that sports casting voice. So I used to randomly go out in public and just go up to a random group of people. My buddies would be like, we can't even go out for fucking drinks with you. <laughs> Like, we can't, we don't have fun with you, Bobby, because you just leave us. You run up to a random group of table and you're like, Brady at the 20. <laughs> Welker in the right slot, Crock in the far left here. And the people would like look at me strange, but then they would laugh. And I had like a 99% success rate of like people laughing. By the way, uh, big thanks to Callaway. Mm-hmm. Bob, do you want to thank Callaway also? I do. Of course I do. I'm, I'm excited to go to the new show and go see the new products. They, uh, this is going to come out sometime later, so this driver will be old news by then. But I think what really I was talking to AJ and Chad, the two guys that I know from Callaway, and they were really nice last night about how, I mean, it's cool. Like, they're just they're just making a cool place for us to hang out. Like, I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw you. Well, we're going to find out today. We're going to find out if it is cool. I we're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to get to the bottom of this. But you love golf. No, I do, yeah. I like to play. I like I, I like to play big. I don't like gamble elsewhere, but I play fucking huge money games. Didn't you and I play for money? We I have. think I took 20 bucks off you. Yeah, the numbers have gone up since then. <laughs> <laughs> They're you, not 20 might... anymore. It's it's more like can I eat tomorrow? Tell me a little I want to get into all of your story, but you yeah. you uh when did you how when did you first play golf? What is that story? First played golf, I was just a bag boy at a country club, just kind of was around the sport. Um, I was cleaning golf clubs at like 14, 15 years old. What course? And over country club in Massachusetts. Okay. You're, you're a mass, you're mass guy. Mass guy. My father was a member there for so many years. My uncle was a head pro. Fired me like nine times, but I got a job <laughs> back. Are you, uh, why, you, you seem to be a person that would be a difficult hire. Terrible hire. But I always find a way to get hired. <laughs> it's like the time at Wilshire caddying when yeah. I, I told them that I, I caddied Augusta. <laughs> I went up to the starter, Pete, and he's like, so wherever you worked? And I just like just panicked. I was like, Augusta? <laughs> ask Pete. I'm not joking. Well, yeah. And I'm that, not going to ask Pete. Don't, you, don't guys ask have, Pete. you guys have a sordid history. Yeah, we do. Pete, the starter at Wilshire. Anyway, you, but, you, but, you, yeah. but you start. <laughs> yeah. He's a firecracker. He's, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Moving horse, on. horse of a different color. You, when we take a break for commercial, I can ask you how deep we can go into that story. Mm-hmm. But, the, but the real deal is you started playing golf, 14, 15. You're working at a club. Mm-hmm. Did you love golf at the time, or were you just like making money caddying? I was not caddy. I was bag boy. Bag boy. Bag boy. So I would just, when players were done, they would throw their clubs at me, give me a dollar, and I would clean their clubs and make sure they were clean. Right. And then I would put them in the stall. Was, was that a thankless job? 
No, everybody's pretty cool. It was a pri- it was like one of those private clubs. You know, they're all cool people. So and like, you're you're, you're a master of like kind of like short talk of just schmoozer. Being like, I'm just, a little schmoozer. Just bada 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 bada. Yeah, bada boom. Yeah. Like, were you doing the Were you doing the sports announcer bit then? No, I wasn't like, well, thanks for your clubs. Here you go. How do you want your nine iron clean? No, uh, no, I wasn't. Uh, but the oldest because the question I get asked a lot is like, when is the first moment that you realize that you had the sports announcer voice? And the only member, the, mo- the moment that I can remember is I was sitting in a car with my buddy Josh Avanella in high school. We had the windows down, and there was this really old lady sitting next to us with her window open. And I just basically like went off on this like rant like about like Coco. I was like, "Well, Coco Crisp, and he steals second, and like something said something stupid." And the lady's like looking at us like, "What the fuck is wrong with this kid?" That's the oldest memory I have of when right. I first used the voice. So you're doing the bag boy thing, and then I mean, are you playing golf on Mondays? What's going on? Um, no, I mean, I really, I, I was never really. No, not really. I mean, I was. No, I, I wasn't. I was. It was not like Mondays. Like it, 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 when I was at that other club in Andover, you could play any day you want. Right. Past three o'clock. So I was playing when I could, but I was just more working. You yeah. Know? It was just a job. And then and then you continued through. Did you go to college? Did you go to high school? Wait, I, when did you drop out? Is my question. Yeah. <laughs> barely made it out of high school. You made it. Oh, that's good. Yep. Uh, I made it out of high school barely, and then I studied acting. Really? Yeah, one week. I did not one week. No lie. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> I did a one week camp at the New York Film Academy. Oh, you completed a one week class. I thought you meant. Well, it was no. It was uh, it was like a year program. <laughs> it was a year program, but I made it a week. Right, that's good. I just was like, this 2%. is weird. Like people are running around in like Peter Pan outfits. I'm like, I'm fucking out of here. Right. I can't be doing this. But you you knew that acting was interesting to you, and I wonder why. Do you know why? Uh. I just felt, you know, you were, you could be free, you could be yourself, you don't have to like fucking worry about anybody else. Right. You know, when you're in an acting room and you're in like a safe place, I guess you, know, you can just do whatever the fuck you want. You know, like this room, like is this room safe. This room is very it's safe. Turn safe. those goddamn cameras off it's now. It's not safe. This is a safe room. <laughs> um. So yeah, no. I mean, it, it got a little weird. I mean, when they had you do things like an improv, like when they're like, all right, and that's why I thought they were fucking with us. They're like, all right, everybody's an animal. Like you're gonna walk around like an animal. I'm like, what am I? Do- why am I crawling around like a tiger? Yeah, why are you a giraffe? Like, a I'm like this is not normal. Yeah. So uh, that's when I was like. All right, let's ax this. And, well, yeah. it's like I guess ultimately you were you looking for a, a, a sense of performer, but not like theatrical. I just always loved. I just loved the arts. I loved. I loved going to the movies. Yeah, I loved like Philip Seymour Hoffman was my one of my favorite actors. Why? Um, I don't know. He was fucking real. He was just like, like I mean, him in uh, Charlie Wilson's War. I think was his, mm. one of his best movies. Um, He's also dark. Yeah, I mean, he was. You know what I mean? But like he, uh, he kind of just like. He he consumed whatever he was doing. Yeah, you know, kind of like Daniel Day Lewis. I think they're kind of in the same yeah category. They're just both killers yeah. in that industry. Yeah, is that something you would want to do? Definitely, that's what I'm trying to do in 2019. It's just like all like uh, I want to do acting, TV. Do you see there being a difficult jump for you now? I think what it gets back to is like in to be a comedian. Are you a comedian? What what are you the most? I don't know. I don't You're know. A comedian. I don't know the fuck I am. I just, I don't know. I mean, it's just, I, I have no idea. And all, what I do is what you see on Instagram. What is the talent that's most valuable for you then that you have of, 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 of what makes Bob Bob? Probably my voice. Your voice. But I mean, beyond that, I think what I'm getting at is like the sense of comedic timing is, involves like an incredible level of intelligence. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I mean, that's humble, it. but I just, I don't know when I, when I think about all the great comedians, there's there is an extraordinary level of. I mean, it may not be book smart, it may not be life decisions. Definitely not fucking book smart. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a, there's an incredible like present moment awareness of like what is funny, you know. And even seeing you interact with people now, like you, how, how have you changed since the last time I've seen you? I've been more disciplined. That's about it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Tell uh, me. You know, no more real big benders. Mm-hmm. I guess as much. Um, no more. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I was, I've just been more disciplined. I've been just, I poured everything into this. Once I get my second chance, because my story, like, the way, I don't know if you want to get into it now, but the way it all started for me was basically went to L.A. for four years to be uh, an actor and comedian. And, and was, when was that? Like, how many years ago from now? Seven? I, don't, I have no idea. I have no sense of time. That's right. another one of my weaknesses. I don't either. I have no sense. I'm so bad mm-hmm. at it. I have a fucking terrible memory. But you. But when did you leave L.A.? Two, two years ago now? I think I'm about just under 
two years. Yeah, so it's like six years ago. This is like right when we first met. You, when we first met, you had just gotten to LA, kind of. Correct. So you came out to be an actor. I came out to be an actor, and then you know, and a comedian, and ended up not doing one audition, not one thing that's supposed to be acting related. Why not? There was fear. There was just like, just didn't know. I I just wasn't I don't know I wasn't centered I didn't yeah. it was hard it's hard for me to start something yeah it's like anything else I think starting is the hardest thing but once I got started and I caught that break that I'm about to tell you like how this happened it's I just like haven't stopped I got obsessive and when I get obsessive with something I can't stop sure until it gets perfectly done but my the way it, the way it happened was I was <clears throat> came back from L A after four years being there actor comedian was not doing well was. Couldn't like wasn't getting work at Wilshire because I was dealing with obviously the problems that you know about with the whole. There was an unspoken drama that occurred at Wilshire, yeah. and from now until I'm not the day legally you allowed. Die, I'm not legally allowed to talk about it. So you're not even legally allowed to talk. No, about it. not legally allowed to talk about. Are it. you? Will your children be allowed to go on the property? <laughs> My great grandchildren, their great grandchildren, <laughs> their dogs, cats, whatever they have, none of them will be allowed on the property. They're not going to at Wilshire. Wilshire Country Club. Well, now one day, one day I'll be able to play Wilshire. I think so. I would like to, you know, maybe it's in an outfit that is, conceals your identity, but. Well, I'm just going to have to go with like Babina Mamari or something, with like a wig and like a like, <laughs> Babina or something. So anyway, the shit hits the fan at Wilshire. And... Sh- shit hits the fan at the Wilshire. I'm actually at a point where I'm sleeping in a car. What uh, kind of car? Towards the town. Uh, a, a Jeep uh, Wrangler. I think. Okay. Jeep, it, it had space. It was that's, good. That's and good had, for the apocalypse. It had some tinted windows. <laughs> and I had, it was, it was like funny, I had, a, I had a membership at the YMCA. So, on uh, so, Selma there in Hollywood? On uh, Selma in Hollywood. That's <laughs> yeah. gangster. Took a lot of jacuzzi baths That's there. Gangster. It was pretty cool, yeah. What was your sport there? You just do the gym? No, Racquetball? I would just shower. <laughs> I didn't know the fuck the gym. I just needed a place to shower. That's actually a really good... That's a good life hack. It's... Sleep, car, shower, why? Save a lot of rent. I'll tell you that much. I'm thinking about it. Save a lot of rent. So what I did was I would, I would sleep in the car, but I wouldn't tell anybody. Like, I didn't tell anybody. Like, my family had never asked for money, never... You know, whatever. I was just didn't it, work was slow and whatnot. So I ended up just being like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna sleep in a car." So I would drive around, find different neighborhoods that were like nice to sleep in. Right. Sleep in the back of the car. Go to the YMCA. Go to Wilshire to try and get a job. And that was my routine for a month straight. Now imagine people somebody sleeping in the car for a day, right? Yeah, that's... I, did, I did it for a fucking month straight. 30 days. Why didn't you have a place? What happened? I just didn't have any money at the time. I mismanaged right. I mismanaged funds. I had, you know. Because you were getting loops at Wilshire. I was getting loops at Wilshire, but I also had terrible habits. I was, like what we talked about, I was just a bad... Yeah. I wasn't... You would leave Wilshire with less money than you arrived with. I would make 200 I would spend 700 <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Kanye West talks about Yeah. That. So... Uh, I've gotten better at that, but um, so yeah, and then basically I, I never told anybody. Was like Bob, where do you live? Like we'd go over drinks. Like Bob, where do you live? I'm like, ah, oh, that apartment building right there. They're like that's weird. It says foreclosed. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, sorry, that one, the one next to it. Right. And uh, and then um, one day I'm I'm literally in my car sleeping. My buddy pulls up Ernie Giapapas. Do you know Ernie? No. Pulls up, finds me in the car. He's like, Bobby, we know you're sleeping in the car. He's like, you're not doing right. He's like, you got to go home. So I'm like, well, I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like waking up in the car. He's like, you got to go home. You're not doing well at all. So I, he picks up the phone. He calls my family and he's like, hey, just want to let you know, Bob is not doing well. He's just not, he's got to come home. My dad and mom are like, fuck, not again. You know, joking, but. Um, I go, because they said that with me. Yeah. <laughs> it happened like five times. So, so I, I, I go back home. And I remember going back home. This is how fast it happened. When go back home, I was home for probably about four or five days. And I, uh, my buddy, brother-in-law picks me up. He's like, you got to get a job. He's like, you, you know, you got to get a job. We got to get you back in the game. I'm like, all right. So he drops me off at a liquor store <laughs> down the street. I saw you laughing. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> drops me off at the liquor store. And I walk in. I'm like, hi, I'm Bob Mattery. I'm looking for a job, you know. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and they get, got the application. Went home. I get a call from my buddy Mike Constantino, who's this big rapper. He's got nine thousand followers on Instagram. Right, right. He's like, "Yo, you want to be in my music video? I'm shooting this new music. It's called like Killing People, or something like that." So I was like, "All right, I'm in. I'm in. Fuck it." So I go to his house. We shoot the music video. You see my fingernail in the thing or something? Who knows? Right. Then I go and uh, I go to this back room. I go sit on a couch, and I sit next to this guy who I've never met before. His name's David Justin. 
Never met the guy in my life. David and I were all talking. So obviously, what do I do that I've done throughout my whole life? I do my what? I do my, bit. my bit. Right. So I'm like, you know, welcome. We put on that. I put on like, I always had the NFL on Fox. But you know who David Justin is. I know him now. Yeah. I didn't know him at the time. Is a baseball player? No. No. No, no. David Justin is a random kid. Oh, literally nobody. Random nobody. Oh, I Ten. thought he might have had 10,000 followers. <laughs> no, 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 no. So uh, he pulls out his phone, presses record, and I do my bit. Whatever. Same as I've done forever, you know. But I go to bed. Next morning, I wake up. My phone's like, bling, bling, bling. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? You know, whatever. So I check my phone. It's like my shit went viral, like, overnight. USA Today picked it up. Like, New York Post. It was number one on Reddit. It was like, why isn't this guy a sports announcer? And it went, like, everywhere. Like, everywhere across the internet. And so I'm sitting there, and I had a golf tournament to play that day. And I was playing with this guy, one of my dad's friends, who was a member guest. Uh, a member guest, and he's like, "I'm like, hey, I gotta be by my phone today. Like, I, I got some stuff going on, whatever." And he's like, "You're not using your phone today." So I put my phone away for the day. I went back and checked my phone. I hit 316 missed calls when I came back. Like I said, my clip went viral. I did the next day. I put another clip out there. I did the same exact thing. I kind of did this bit where I uh, did the sports announcer thing. It went viral again. It was number one on Reddit. Blah blah. So I had some traction. So then my buddy goes, "You ever heard of Instagram?" I'm like, no, I have no fucking idea what Instagram is, whatever. Um, basically carried my, uh, after that, uh, started doing sports glitches on Instagram with like 30 followers. It was like my grandmother, mother, aunt, like whatever. Yeah. They shared it. And then, uh, yeah, it just started. That's how it all started. Yeah, I remember that. And I remember yeah. actually right around this time, you were like, you were like, yo, you hit me up and you were like, yo, let's make a documentary of me literally, uh, you know, rising to the top of this like sports comedy thing you're like bobby you have 31 followers we can't do that <laughs> i was skeptical i was like bob i don't know man like i know that there was some shit that went down at wilshire uh, like i know that like i've always loved the clips you've sent me like they they always cracked me up and i remember even before that like you would send me the stuff and remember i was like dude we should do something with this like this is really funny like you could make i mean you could do anything with that character do you feel that way yeah, well, that's why I think we're trying. To, I'm trying to do this animated series, which would be cool. I think we're trying to figure out how to do it, but yeah, with the character of Bob and Peter, and that, yeah. That. Where tell me about Peter? Who the fuck is Peter? Peter is my color commentator, who is there with me day in and day out. Every clip I do, Peter's by my side. Is yeah. he wearing like? Is he uh, like an angel over the right or a devil on the left? Oh boy, he's a devil. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he Does offers... Peter get you in trouble? That's yep. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. Uh, anything bad that happens, Peter gets blamed. So, But Peter doesn't have a voice. Peter talks, but he just chooses not to during, you know, he talks off the mic. He's very shy. He's very shy. <laughs> That's why he's like the worst color commentator ever. He's just so shy. I'm like, Peter, you got to talk. Right. He never does. So, uh, yeah, we're going to, it's Peter. So, so, you then you, so then you get on Instagram and you post some vids. And basically, the world listens. Yeah. I started just, like I said, I started with video game glitches. That's how I started it. Like, you know when you're playing Madden and, like, Dion Lewis has no fucking head for some reason? Right. Like, when his arm rips off or, right. so, you know, the video game glitches. Those are hilarious. So, I'm like, why the fuck is the sports announcer announcing, the, like, Dion Lewis the 20, the 10, 5th or 5 touchdown? I'm like, why is he announcing it like this? Dion Lewis has no fucking head. It needs to be addressed. He's running down the field with no fucking head. So I wanted to be the announcer that called it that way. Right. So I started with sports th uh, glitches and then kind of just got old of those and then just flipped it over to just kind of doing whatever the most recent highlight was that came out, uh, especially if it was something funny, and doing it that way. Your way of looking at, like, sports and games and whatever it is you're commenting on is very direct. You know what I mean? Like, it's just very... It's In a way, it's very simple, which is what makes it so great. Have you, have you had time to reflect on what you do? No. No. No, nope. just do it. I just do it. Yeah, and I hate listening to my voice. I hate talk. I really, really hate talking about it. Yeah, I just do it, and it's the biggest. It's like a very high anxiety moment after I do a clip, and I post it for that three to four minutes. When I post it up there, I can tell how the numbers are doing very quickly. Yeah, and I'm like, either it's like either fuck, I'm an idiot, or it's like nailed it. You know, it's like one right. of the two. Right. And so, um, yeah, I don't really. And then once it's done, it's just done. I don't think about it. Do you so? But if you didn't nail it, do you think about what do you do? You delete it? Do you? I, I get it off pretty quickly. If, but there's not a lot of times where I I I'll allow that to happen. But it has happened where I haven't done well, 
I kind of rushed it. Dude, my blo- my blooper reel is out of control, actually. I would imagine. Dude, when I am fucked up, sometimes I try it like when I'm really, really fucked up. <laughs> and I'm like, I can do a couple of videos right now. And right. I do them, dude. And I just have them saved. Those are the ones I'll listen to because they're fucking hilarious. Just right. me slurring and just sounding like a fucking idiot. Because you, you uh, I mean, at what point are you, do, do, is it controversial anything you're doing? Talking about blow hookers and uh, gay people, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> do you? <laughs> How does that make you feel? I don't care. I think the world needs to loosen up a little bit, and I'm not offending anybody really in my clips. There was one clip I did that was bad that I had to get rid of. I'm not going to repeat it. It, <laughs> it was one that was really bad, but uh, I don't know. It's not. It's nothing. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm just, right. you know, I'm making trying to make people laugh in a very weird world that we live in now, where everybody's being big pussies. Well, I mean, you know, uh, who did we interview? Uh, you know, Richard Kind. He was on Curb Your Enthusiasm, cousin Andy. Yeah, of course. And he was saying about how, like, you know, multiple types of people come up to him. Some people come up and they're like, "Hey, cousin Andy." Some people come up and they're like, "Yo, can I get a photo?" Some people come up and they're like, "Dude, when my mom was dying, mm-hmm. your comedy changed my life, mm-hmm. and and it got me through that." Mm-hmm. I mean, I I don't know if if you've gotten that yet or anything, but. Do you get a chance to interact with the people that enjoy your work? All the time. Yeah, I do now. It's cool. Yeah, that's the cool thing. And that's why everybody's like, when I get asked for pictures, everybody's like, does it bother you, man? Do you mind if I ask you for a picture? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, take five. I love this shit. Yeah, like, I was sleeping in a car. I was like, dude, I was sleeping in a fucking car. Take all the pictures you want. <laughs> the worst is when it's a group of three, though. That's my thing. It's a group Interesting. Of, it's a group of three people, and they come up, like kids normally. Like, if I go to a basketball game or a football game, it's a thousand pictures. Right. 1,000. It's nonstop. It's like Elvis is in the building. It's fucking weird. And it's like, I'm like, what the fuck? How dumb are you guys? I do stupid videos. Like, what, <laughs> why do you want a picture with me? But uh, uh, the worst is when it's like three people and two, like all three will be like, yeah, hey, huge fans, two fans. Like, I'm like, oh, dude, thanks. Like, whatever. And they're like, uh, can I get a picture? I'm like, of course. So I'll take a picture with one. Then I'll take a picture with the second one. And the other kid will just be standing there. I'm like, do you want a picture? And he'll be like, no. And I'll be like, what the, what the fuck do you mean, no? <laughs> Like, that's but, so uncomfortable. I'll, I'll just get so mad right and i'll be like damn just so. play along yeah just fucking take a picture <laughs> this with me, right? me this is me please just take a fucking picture <laughs> you realize how painful it is when you said <laughs> no to me dude i know it's the worst so yeah. Yeah. i mean on some level what is that like now like now do you have a different consideration when you go out to a sporting event do you have to think about it differently now is there is it logistically different or are you just roll i just roll yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's I don't. It's it's but cool. It's, it's the, the, the only time where, the only time where it sucks is like when I'm really hungover, right? And then somebody will come up to me, and people will come up to me and say like, "Oh, you're Bob Menery or something like that." And then I'll just be like, "Oh, fuck, I hate that. I'm hungover. I, I don't want to do this, but I'm still right. trying to mess." But otherwise, I'd love it. Because are you an introvert or an extrovert? I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? Brilliant. That's yeah. You just inverted the question completely. Um, <laughs> 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 what? Uh, so, so you play? You what, what's your favorite sport? My favorite sport to play is golf. To watch is football. Right. Yeah, I like watching NFL. I just sneeze too, but go ahead. That was an interesting sneeze. No, I have well, to. It's coming, door. It, it, <laughs> just give it a second. Did you ever see the Bogan Aussie? Um, I feel like I sent you this a while ago. Is this Australian guy who he's a, he's like a he's a similar version, but he wasn't successful. Mm-hmm. You know, he do, he does these kind of like he's also way more fucked up. Like his shit is like. I can barely, I feel guilty listening to it. Yeah. Like he's talking about, well, we'll listen to it later, but yeah. And if you're listening to this now and you want to get, you know, like another, uh, you know, more on the story, it's like, it's just interesting because don't send my people elsewhere. (laughs) Don't go listen. Don't listen to them. No. Well, I think it's interesting because it's like, you, when you look at like, there's Pandora, there's Spotify, there's Apple music. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and why do you pick a certain one or why does a certain one become more successful? Have you had a chance to look at that yet? Like, what is it about what you do? that has worked um well i think actually first back to your point where it's like i've pulled back a lot of the stuff now that i've done like i in the beginning when i first started doing this i went like really brutal with the stuff i was saying yeah and whatever but now it kind of gets to the point where like sponsors are involved and stuff like that so you got to pull it back a little bit so i push it as far as i can where i can still get like paid to do shit what is the what is the word where is the cutoff between words what word can you say still and what word can't you say still you, I don't think anything, you know, I stay away from race, politics, which obviously race, politics, because politics, like, cause I don't ever do anything like Trump or Obama, like, and it, right. it divides your audience. It's dumb to do. Yeah. You know, so I stay, I stay away from those things. Um, 
I mean, nothing with just like, I mean, I, it, you know, South Park did like gay jokes and stuff right. like that. I, I still do them, but I do them in a different, try and do them in a d- more delicate way. Right. You know? Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I I, I don't really. It depends because you probably just sit like. There's down. not a lot more. There's not as a blow. The blow jokes have slowed down huge. <laughs> like let's be honest. All right. Like the blow jokes are because that is something where I actually lost like a couple big deals because of that. You've had um, so we you mentioned South Park. Do you have any like inspirations that you go to? Like I mean, what what do you watch when you're like I just need to fucking laugh? Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, I don't really watch that much comedy stuff. Family Guy was obviously great, but I I'm, love Family I'm Guy. more of like a guy that just goes on YouTube and watches like which I forget who says it, what comedian, but like just I just watch like snakes eat things and alligators eat gazelles <laughs> for like hours, and I just like will sit there. That, I'm not joking. That's my thing. I don't do any. I don't like <laughs> sit there and watch. I'm remembering now. Yeah, you did post this where you and I don't remember someone else were watching the, uh, but it wasn't like Planet. Was it Planet Earth? Did you get into that. I just started watching Blue Planet, and I, I That's good. yeah, Blue Planet was good. But I, yeah, I just I mean I'm just so into like the nature shit, right? And like I don't do, but I don't do comedy. Like I don't watch anything com- like at all. It gets is it is it dark what you're watching? I mean, you're watching Animal like Animal Kingdom like. Well, my favorite clip is Battle of Kruger. Have you ever seen that? That's really good. That's the fucking craziest shit ever. <laughs> it's really good. Buffaloes come out and the fucking alligators come and fuck up. Have you have you done that one? Oh, you, you know. should commentate Battle well, of Kruger. Well, here's the deal. That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, and here come the buffaloes. They are not happy. The alligator is in the water waiting for the lions who are now waiting to go fuck up the buffaloes. And the buffaloes are waiting for the gator. Oh, the gator pulls the buffalo in. Not a good sign. But here come the lions. As the lion rips the buffalo's asshole out. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Dude, you really know that clip. Dude, I do. I've watched it so many times, and every time I have the same reaction, I'm like, yeah. wow. <laughs> it's ultimately, you know, what's cool is you're watching, like, the first sport. Yeah. This is the first sport. It's, like, like animal versus animal. Like, I, to I, the death. I did do, no, I did do a fucking clip, though, on that. I did do. I remember I did a clip. I put the NFL and Fox soundtrack behind. It was like, da 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 And there was a gazelle crossing the water. And I was like, here comes the alligator, and he is about to fuck the gazelle up. And, oh, my. You know, I did do that before. Right. I did do that clip. I love that. So you could probably get into some meta shit too, where it's like, because you know, like I love David Attenborough, I love Planet Earth. Like when he's talking about the sloth, like you could even just do one on the sloth. Like I feel like for you, the best is like a blank canvas in some ways. You yeah. Know what I mean, like because even I don't know, it's, I just think that you th- that would be a cool exercise in some way. You know, I'd love to yeah. see that. See, I always want to switch it up, like obviously because I don't want to do the same thing over and over again with sports. But it's like at the same time, the numbers are still the same. The numbers are getting better. Yeah. The engagement's getting better. So it's like hard for me to like just transition and take a risk could do something like that and try and replicate those numbers. Yeah. Once they start to slow down, I'll make a transition into something else. But the numbers are still growing every day. The following's growing the same exact way. They're not, it's not slowing down at all. No. The engagement's getting better by the day. Well, so, on some level, I mean, you know, we, we are in this world now of social media where it's just churn. It's just you need to put the milk on the shelf and and like every day. Yeah. And I face that where I'm like, but it's not as good as the other day. And it's like, well, no, but y- you can't look at it that way because at this point now it's just a newspaper mm-hmm. needs to show up on the doorstep. Yeah. And it's interesting because I'm used to basically like my past as a documentary filmmaker was like I do like three projects a year. And now it's like, well, I need to come out with like something every day. And it's like you need to put attention into it. I mean, I don't know. Do you ever are you ever just like I need to shut down? I always do. I always shut down. How long do you shut down for? It doesn't. I never have a set schedule. I never, ever, ever plan a set schedule. Um, I'll do more now peak engagement times where I post because it's important. Beginning when I first started doing, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'll put something to there. I, I was always like a rebel. Like my people, my people, my man, like my guys that helped me out like through right. the process would be like, you got to post at 8 p.m. You got to post at 7 p.m. And I'd just be like, no, fuck you. I'm posting whatever I want. If it's good content, it's going to whatever. But there is like some algorithm behind it, which I didn't realize. Yeah, now I'm realizing right. now. So, um, yeah, that's... I mean, if it's your job at this point, there's a certain way to clean the groups, there's yeah. a certain way to post a video. I just don't put thought into it. And I think when I, and when I stopped caring, and tr- like that's when I started to have a little bit of success is when I just was like, fuck it. Right. I'm just going to do whatever the fuck he I want. He just says... <laughs> yeah, he just says, fuck it. That's it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's it. So... You kind of have this version of the world and the athletic mindset where it's like, 
it, 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 I don't know. Why, I'm trying to figure out why it's so funny. You know what I mean? It's, it seems to be that, um, I don't think it is. You know, we, we, we basically think that these superstars, these gladiators, these athletes are all very in control. And, and you have this version of it where it's just like, it's a mess. And I think that's why Kruger is so interesting to you is because it's like, it was like, you know, when you go back into the history of all of, you know, sport ultimately comes from life and death. It's kind of goes back to that. Mm-hmm. Did I just did I just ruin this podcast? No, I love it. I'm I'm like so engaged. This is the you're, shit I like to talk about. You're into that. Yeah. What um you but but you have one you have you you were we were talking about jerky boys at breakfast. Yeah. And those those listening that are above the age of thirty or so. Colt, do you know what jerky boys are? Never heard of jerky boys. Really? Isn't that crazy? Oh yeah, I yeah, Jerky Boys are great. Those are called the Uncle Freddy one's my favorite. There's <laughs> when Uncle Freddy didn't die, and then he screams in the background. Yeah, they were just fucking classic. And like you were saying, that was all pre-internet shit. And uh, yeah, Jerky Boys is great. I used to put that CD in, and just fucking just road trip and just listen to every fucking one and just die laughing. It's so good. Yeah. Um, Saul's glasses. Saw the glasses. I fell down the stairs and yeah, my shoes yeah, came yeah, off. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need new glasses. Yeah. What? And so we were talking about that because uh, you know prank calling just like shut down. Mm-hmm. Like, like no one does it anymore. I don't know why, but you you have one. Can you tell the story about your your uh, one? You did, I mean, if you did one prank call, this is the one to do in golf. I was hung over on the couch in uh, in L.A. and uh, for no reason just decided to call Augusta National. And it was Saturday, and uh, I, I, I Googled, I was reading an article, I think Bill Gates is a member there. So I was just bored, and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to call Augusta right now, record it, and just pretend I'm Bill Gates and ask if I can get a tea time at 2 o'clock, because I got a couple clients that I want to fly in <laughs> and want to play. So they, I'll find this clip for you, too. They answer the phone, they're like, Augusta National, how can we help you? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, how you doing, Bill Gates? <laughs> and they were like, uh, they were like, Mr. Gates, how are you? And I was like, pretty good. I'm like, listen, I got a, I got two important guys I'm flying in here. And this is not my Bill Gates impression. I, Can I, you do your Bill Gates impression? I don't have one. That's the problem. But I, I, I it was better than this. I'm just telling the story as it is. <laughs> but slightly better. Because my this. thought was they're like, hey, Bob Menery. No, no, because this they is, wouldn't know me. This is before. Well, this is this is like, yeah, this is like smoking crack by a dumpster face. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Um. So. Yeah, so basically called them. They were like, uh, I guess the national, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Bill Gates, I got two guys that I want to fly out, uh, that, or excuse me, that are f- flew into town today that I want to get out there. And they, they were like, uh, they were like, oh, unfortunately, Mr. Gates, uh, we have the Masters this week. And I'm like, what do you mean the Masters this week? And he's like, well, 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 and he was like stumbling. He's like, well, the Masters, you know, the tournament, the Masters. And I was like, this is unacceptable. Can you fit me in? Can you can you put me on like 16 or 17? I'm like, these guys are very important. And the guy like went on for literally like a minute and a half. And I had this guy going. Right. And then finally the call just ended where he was just like, this isn't Bill Gates, is it? And I was like, oh. gotcha. See you later, bitch. And just hang up the phone. <laughs> I was like, yeah, nailed it. And then I, think, I was like, what am I doing with my life? Augusta's literally going to get like 90 calls as soon as this goes up. Yeah. I mean, on some level, like, uh, I'm shocked you got that far. Because I would think there'd be a separate phone number for the members. Like, like It was, nope, simple. Boom. Just Pro Shop Augusta. Pro Shop. It. Pro Shop Augusta Saturday. Are you going to play Augusta? Day. What's going on? Um, yeah, I've gotten invited there a bunch of times. Yeah, it's weird. I can play everywhere. I can't play fucking Wilshire. It like, <laughs> pisses me off. I want to go back there and be like, what's up, boys? It's kind of like an important part of your story, though. And that that's like more, Cause, cause Bob it's Mennery, more important for me to play Wilshire than it is Augusta. I don't believe that. I'm serious. I don't believe I that. I swear to God. But Bob Mennery, you have this uh you, you you are like a social poker, right? Like you're going to get kicked out of places. Are you okay with that? Yeah, but not really. I've gotten only get kicked out of Wilshire. In several clubs. In several bars. You're right, actually. I take everything back. Yeah, I mean that's 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 that's, <laughs> that's what's happening in this phase of the comedy career. Right. right, you're pushing the envelope to a degree that, like, I mean, do you look at? Um, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, Jim Carrey played him in um, in uh, Man on the Moon. Um, come I f- on, I forget. I forget who it is. Uh, Kaufman. Okay. Yeah. Um, Charlie Kaufman. Charlie Kaufman. Yeah, you're, the you're, famous writer guy, right? No, Andy no, that's um, Charlie Kaufman, the comedian. Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. Andy Ka- Charlie Kaufman's the the writer. You're right. right. Yeah. Andy Kaufman, the kind of like social comedian. Yeah. You know the one who was like. Um, here I come to save the day. You yeah. Know, you're kind of in that realm now, but it's social media and sports. When people meet me, I'm a, I'm a good guy. What I do online is just a shtick. 
Right. So I don't know. I don't really. I'm not. A, I'm a good person. I'm a good. I'm a, I'm person. a good person. Wait, this is a cry make, for help. Hang on, Bob. Can we make a shirt where you're just? It's just a. Uh, trust, you me, I'll says, trust me. I'll trust me. I'll make a, a fucking person. shirt. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a good person. I'm, I'm a like good person. Uh, you, yeah. No, I'm not. A, I don't know. I mean, I. I yeah, I've never. I think Wilshire's the only place I'm not allowed to. I'm really 86 from. Who was the person that you've you've met a lot of celebrities in the last couple of years? Mm-hmm. Uh, what what was the moment where you're like, whoa, pinch me? Amandola Edelman sleep overnight was pretty cool. <laughs> that was a cool sleepover. One. Sleep overnight. Uh, went out to dinner with those guys. Got fucked up. I'm like, Jules, uh, hate to say this, I, I can't drive. I have to stay at your house. And he's like, <laughs> fuck. All right, fine. So uh, just had a, and I'm like a big Patriots fan. Yeah. And so it was just pretty starstruck. They're like, Bob, why do you keep staring at us? I'm like, oh, sorry, nothing. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, ended up, uh, it was like just a weird moment. I was just in his apartment, all the history and like Brady on pictures and sign stuff. And I was like, that's that was pretty cool. That was a cool moment. There's been a, there's been a lot, a lot of cool things. And how has it been? How has it? How has it? I've seen you kind of. Uh, I I don't. I only know what the public knows at this point because I haven't seen you in a while. But how has dating been? Like, how does that work as now, Bob Menery? Honestly, nothing. Nothing. It's worse. Like, really? I don't know. Yeah. No. I get like Why? twelve year old boys slide my DMs. They're like, "You're the goat." I'm like, "Where are your sisters? Can you please introduce me to somebody?" I'm like, "Nobody." It's like I don't know how the fuck this is even happening. Didn't you do one? I I. I see. I look at what you do, and I see it as social experimentation. I like when you go live, and you're like, "I'm going live with somebody right now," and you're like going into the feed, and it's like, "Who's down?" And like people are like afraid to join. You know, you see the one where you're like, "Fine, I'm going to go live with you," and then they don't, then they decline, and you're yeah. like, "It's it's an interesting way to look at well, celebrity, fandom, comedy, mm-hmm. all this interesting stuff." I I really do see a lot of intelligence in it, and but it affects how has it affected your personal life? Um. No, I don't know. Same. There's really nothing changed. No, no, not really. Uh, but the whole the the cool the, the that thing you were talking about the uh, bringing the random people on. Yeah, I think that's fucking awesome. Bre- Bregman show. does it now. Alex does it. Alex is a good buddy of mine. And by the way, the future of baseball is the best player in baseball. Great. Right. Next, and he makes you know he's five hundred sixty five thousand dollars a year right now. And you know what he's gonna make next year? Bottom of the totem pole. Yeah, you know what he's gonna make next year. Eight million. Tw- Twenty-five million. Jesus. Uh, he's going to be one of the highest in baseball. And I'm like, is that sank in yet? And he's like, no. I'm like, that's a lot of money. Has dude. he have any money from that yet? Does he have any money from what? Because I would start spending the money I don't have. Yeah, we so talked about I. this. Yeah, <laughs> so would I. Um, no, but I mean, to get beginning, you know, because he's going to get a fucking three. It just all depends on what Harper's deal is, where this isn't really a baseball talk show thing. But yeah. Um, but he's the man. He does. He's doing a lot for the community and everything now. He's just a fucking well-rounded He's a stud. So let's wind down here, but I just wanted to, uh, we're going, let's go back to golf for a second. Again, thank you, Callaway. I really appreciate the space here. We're in this like, we're in this like man cave. Yeah, this is sick. Is this very, is like what great. I dream of, of doing with this whole thing that I'm doing. I would yeah. love this. It'd be cool if they had a little bed in here. Yeah. And then we could just sort of, anyway. Um, the, here, uh, turn the, the camera off. Golf. When we talk about golf, right? You've spent a, you've spent a better part of your lifetime in and around golf. Um, do you see like, what's your perspective on golf and its current state in America? I mean, what, what do you, do you, do you sort of go to golf and you're like, ah, or do you go to, or, or do you, or do you have no problems with it? Or do you, do you see anything? I mean, cause you've been on all sides of the game now, yeah, right? Like celebrity, uh, smaller country clubs, I'm sure nice courses, whatever, uh, tournaments you've seen so much golf in your life. What is your perspective on the game? A lot of people say it's broken or it's dying or it's going to grow the game. Da, da, da. Do you give a shit? Yeah, I think. I mean, I personally, I think it's everything. I think, I think the game. I love the game of golf. So, but I think it needs to get a little bit more exciting. I think it needs to get a little more fun. I think what they're doing, like the Tiger Phil thing, it's cool. Um, yeah, I just think it's. I mean, it's let's get a little less boring and kind of. You know, do you know they did you hear about the uh, the interview thing they wanted to do during the rounds? They were trying to look into that. Yeah. Doing like in round interviews. Yeah. And I think like JT was really against it. Brooks said he was was against it at first, but would do it. I just think some more stuff like that would kind of spice the game up a little bit. You know, just right. make it a little more action packed instead of just like watching these guys walk by and like just go hit their next golf. Show. You know, trying to get people outside of the golf game to watch it somehow. So I agree. Um, you know, you kind of end up um, going. And I to think, sleep and to by it. the way, I think I'm a, I'm a very good candidate for making that happen. So. Menery Masters. I think we could turn. The, I could do the this. The Menery Masters. That could be another good shirt. I've come up with two great pieces of merch for you. They'll are. They're already on the site. <laughs> 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 they're already on the site. Right. Being sold. Trust me. Um, uh, is where did Peter get his name? 
Uh, well, Peter was born with his name, so. <laughs> but Peter's not a real person. <laughs> well, you can't, Peter's one of the best color con. You know, Aikman. You got. Uh, uh, give me some more here. Whoever they are, color. Uh, you got all these guys, and you got Peter. Peter. I w- I grew up with the Mets, the New Jersey, the New York Mets, mm-hmm. and I can't remember their commentator's name. But mm-hmm. when I hear him, I freak out. Yeah. Well, wait till you hear Peter, because he's coming. He's not. No, he doesn't. But where did he? Was it from Pete? No, it wasn't from Pete. No, 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 no. <laughs> but that would have been awesome if it was. <laughs> it's the ultimate like stab, twist, kill. I'm uh, gonna make a character based on you. <laughs> that's awesome. Pete is a mutual friend. No, uh, Peter. Let me just tell you this. Peter will be found. But will be heard. Not found. Peter will be heard very soon and in a very big way. Right. And I don't know. See, Peter's a little camera shy. Wait, so, is Peter Samuel L. Jackson? Close. That would be incredible. Close. Very close. You're incredible. getting hotter. Yeah. You want to play the hotter and colder game? No, but Peter is very shy. He will be revealed at a certain point. When he is revealed, boy, oh, boy, you just wait to see who comes in the booth. With me. I, I can't wait. Uh, any questions for me? Um, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric... How's your dog? I you, um, he's, he's asleep. I mean, he's I've already asleep. asked you so many questions at the party. I don't know. Yeah. I, you don't have to. I mean, I just throw it out there. Fuck. It's just kind this of like so it's bad. a bit of a You're wild card. The spot now. I don't know yeah. what to do. I'm panicking. It's a, it's Am I bit, turning red? It's a bit of a wild oh, card. Oh, God. Pull it. Pull it. Um, I just, I, I would, you know, I think um, my cousin. And by the way, I will have you on my podcast, and I will have questions ready. I yeah. just didn't know. I don't know how this works. Yeah, right? I'll have some ready for you. All right. The... Um, the uh, my there seems to be, I think one of the things too that's interesting about what you do is this kind of uh, off the rails commentator, is that I think we all think that way. I, I think I think I've seen it come. Like I've seen a lot of people that aren't as talented as you basically go through some type of a sporting event or some type of life event, and it kind of happens. Like you can almost commentate on someone at the grocery. Well, I did. Remember the girl taking a shit in the ground. <laughs> Did you ever see yeah, that? Yeah, she yeah. walks in a fucking store and she just bends <laughs> over and drops a doogie on the floor. You ever right. see that? And yeah. then throws it at the guy for no reason. <laughs> and just walks out. She was obviously on crack or something. Right. Horrible. I did that one. Uh, I did the one where the lady breaks in the store and climbs the ceiling and falls through. Uh, yeah. No, I do real life stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cops. I'll be into cops soon. Cops. I'll be doing good. some cop stuff. What is your What is your like favorite moment in life that you look forward to the most? Winning the Wilshire Invitational. <laughs> that was my favorite moment in life. Oh, by far. Are you fucking kidding me? Your name's on a plaque. <laughs> Forever. Who did you play with? Uh, David Kim. Wow. Yeah. Randall was his caddy one day. He's like, hey, kid, you play golf? I'm like, no way. damn right I can. He's like, Wilshire Invitational next week. I'm like, see you there. What happened? You just played lights out or did he carry you? I was a 12 handicap and I shot 64 every day. So. <laughs> 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 no, I just fucking played lights out. I don't know. Right. Uh, and then I fucking hit that, that winning... Uh, that winning putt on 18. Uh, you birdied 18? No, we hit it. Um, he hit his drive middle of the fairway. I hit it 20 yards off the green, left side, almost in the hazard. Right. He ch- and we're stroking, I think. Oh, your alternate shot? Alternate shot. Oh, Christ. So he hits it left side. Then he chips it to about 15 feet. I have a downhill slider, quadruple breaker. Right to left? No, quadruple breaker. There's no quadruple break on 18. <laughs> I know. I'm just making it up, trying to make it sound better. I'm like, it is just a It was fucking grade. straight, all right, Eric? <laughs> uh, and uh, it's like straight uphill, all right? I'm like, wait, which <laughs> Wilshire are we talking about? Um, and uh, yeah, and I made it. Did the fist pump. Forgot to pull my ball out of the cup. Gangster. And like, I heard like Jerry. Forget that. I remember like when I was standing there, Jerry Vanderson, he was this like evil, like not, I mean, good guy, but he would just evil man right i don't know if that makes sense like he was just like really mean to caddies and i remember standing on the green and basically for anybody that doesn't know it was a wilshire invitational it was this huge event in california and uh, i was the only caddy i think ever in the history to play it probably and i ended up fucking winning <laughs> <laughs> and beating the president of the club on 18 to do it so drain it's the so brilliant drain the putt fist pump run around the green but I remember prior to that standing there and hearing, Je- hearing Jerry Vandersandy over my shoulder going, and he's this old, like, man. He just reminds you of fucking Scrooge. And he's just like, God, I hope this fucking caddy doesn't win this thing. <laughs> and then I had my putt, and I was like, fuck you, Jerry. Then I went down, and I drained it. That's good. That's the best moment of my life. I believe that. I mean, cause like, that, that really is by far, dude. Because in some ways, that was like you're, pr- you're, you're pre-gaming the revenge. 
<laughs> what do you want people to know about you that, that they don't know? What do people not know about Bob? I don't know. I'm not going to think on my feet. Uh, I'm a really great guy. I'm a really nice person. I'm not the person that I like. I'm not this wild animal drinker that you see on the internet. You're I'm, a guy that says. What time did I go to bed last night? 10:30. No. Before me, 9:30. Nine, nine o'clock. I was yeah. in bed. You were early. I was in bed. You, you're, you're the kind of guy that says hi to people, and I really always like that at Welshire because. Uh, well, it's because I wanted your money, but. <laughs> <laughs> I took your money in the end. Yeah, exactly. I did. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I want that's that's my biggest thing is because like even with dating, it's really hard too because like parents will see like my page and imagine being like you're dating you Bob Mentory. Right. And I'm like, woo, like, let's do blow. Let's go on a bender. Let's rip bags. And At like, this point now, it's a stick that you kind of have to uphold. I can't change it. What am I going to like start going to church? No. You can be like, I could, I'd like to see Bob Mentory on a yoga retreat. That would be pretty me, funny. Me too. I'd love to change this up a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to be this guy anymore. This is horrible. The, but then the, the other thing is, too, you get very drunk easily because you'll be at a bar and it'll happen. Every time I go to a bar, they'll come up and people will be like, Bob, shots, let's do it. Like, let's go. And I'm like, fuck, I don't want to be a pussy and turn it down. So now I'm like a full-blown alcoholic. Right, right. Well, but, you know, so. I mean... Yeah, one one hand, one hand. I don't know. One hand shakes the other. One hand washes the other. Whatever that expression. Is. I have no idea. Anything else? I think we're good. I had a great time. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having us. Thanks for your time, man. Yeah, you, uh, you know, Peter. obviously, uh, yeah, Peter has been. He's been sleeping. There he is over there. He's in the corner. Yeah. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it. You're the best. I love you. Later. All right, see you.